Hi everybody, it's Dee Slater with Create with D. Welcome to my weekly live. Normally I come on on Wednesday um, evenings at five, live at five on Wednesdays, but I was a little under the weather, so this is my rescheduled one. So some of you that tune in um, with me live, I know that this is um, a little bit late and everything, but I think you'll really love the projects that I have planned for us today at class. So this class um, will be all about making some small gifts that we can either have on hand um, or that we can plan to give throughout the season. They also make great craft fair items too. So I hope that those of you that like to make craft fair items, this might be some last minute ones that you can try. Hi, thank you. Thank you for um, saying that I'm feeling better. I am. It was a weird little two day bug and I'm, I'm back at it. All right, so um, again, happy Saturday, and I'll switch the camera view around, and we'll get making our, our little four package projects. Here we go. Okay. Um, all righty. So, um, what, again, I'm all about um, making these small gifts, and if we just put them in a solo bag, they elevate it greatly here. So the first one that I have is going to be a post-it note holder, or um, it's actually not a post-it note, they're sticky pads um, holder that we can put on these lightweight chipboards and just use a magnetic clip. So I'll share with you where I got the items and um, go from there. I will have it. Um, I do have the items where I got on Amazon. I've got my affiliate link on the underneath um, here under the description. And then um, two of the items here I got at the Dollar Tree. Okay. So these are called white, lightweight chipboards, um, coasters, and they come four, but there are four by four and they have the rounded corners. So I got that from Amazon. And then I got the sticky pads from Dollar Tree. You get five of them in a pack. And then I also got these magnetic clips um, from Dollar Tree and those come four in a pack. And the reason why I liked the magnetic ones um, would be that if you wanted to, if you're giving this for office mates, you know, it might be something they can hang up on um, filing cabinets or something or um, on the fridge. You don't, you so don't have to do the magnet if you don't want to, if, um, but I just think that it gives it a little more of a weight and a little more option for who you're giving it to. And if they just want to sit it on the desk, they don't, they can just take the clip off of it. All right. So those are where I got that goodies. I also got some cello bags on Amazon as well. So this project is um, a super fast one that you can do to have on hand. Um, you just start with a piece of pattern paper. Um, you know, this is cut at four by four, and I'm going to show you two ways of doing this here. Um, one is that you can put your paper down on it, and because it's rounded corners, you would glue it down first, and then you could come in and just trim it around. So um, that's one way of doing it. The other way is if you have a corner rounder, this is a retired punch that Stampin' Up! used to have, and they've sold rounded corners um, several times in the past two. Um, so I'll do two, or I'll do three sides showing how you can round the corners. And then on the fourth side, I'll show how you would just trim it. Um, I like liquid glue on this. And for this one, I'm going to put the glue right on the chipboard here. And get this glue started. It's fairly full. I must have had the cap open. There we go. Um, with liquid glue, what I note on people sometimes is that they, um, they put way too much on it. This glue is super strong and you just need a fine bead. I don't know if you can see that, but it's like, I just have a little, I have a fine bead. Any more than that, you're kind of wasting it. All right, so that corner rounder worked just perfectly on here. And I kind of can square it up just a little bit. Now, if you didn't have a, a corner rounder, what you could do is like, you just have those little um, excesses there 
and you literally can just follow along. I'm not going to do it here today with us, but um, if you wanted to, you could take a dauber, a sponge dauber, and go all the way around the edges. Um, I've seen people where, when well, I've even done it too, I've taken an emery board and kind of smoothed out those edges. My thought is, is that this is going to be a short lived gift. And so if you want to do that extra work, you so can, but I don't think that it's 100% necessary. All right. So I'm going to kind of live in our multi-purpose glue and the tear and tape. Oh, thanks, Marilyn. I'm glad that you like that idea. Um, okay, so now I'm going to get some tear and tape. I do want tear and tape on the back of the sticky notes. Um, just because if it does hang vertically, um, I think it'll give it a little more stability. Now the tear and tape is where I'm not going to be so stingy with. I'm going to put four strips on. Again, if I plan to give it to hang on, you know, a refrigerator or something, um, you know, let's let's make sure that the post-it note doesn't fall. Um, the 3M brand of the actual post-it notes, I know that their backing is like their back part of it is a little nicer. Um, but um, I just, you know, like the idea of having five pads. Um, I'm going to put this down just a little lower because I want to put the clip on. And actually, um, what you can do is put the clip where you think you might want it first. And then we'll... I just want to make sure I've got it going in the right direction here. And then you can kind of stage your post-it pad where you want it. <laughs> That's easy. That's it. Gift done. Let's, <laughs> let's make a little label here. Um, so what I did, what I'm using today is I'm using these two sizes of labels, um, die cut labels. You can use any label size that's in your stash. This is from the seasonal labels die. It was part of the Christmas season bundle um, originally, but that's what it goes with. And so ahead of time, I've got that um, basic white image die cut. And um, this has um, the poinsettia background on it. So I wanted to kind of put that on there too. Um, I like to put these in the cello bags um, and put um, whatever I'm stamping inside of the cello bag if it's not naturally a tag um, for it. That way, as people pick it up and or you gift give it, your um, your label, your sentiment, your greeting is protected um, from people like me. Like I want to touch something and look at it when I go to a craft fair. And this way, everything's protected if we do have it in the cello bag. So I like if it's not the outside tag, I definitely like putting it inside of the bag. All right. So for this I'm using two stamp sets today. I'm using the images from Marius Moments on this one. And I'm trying to stick, just to help us all, stick with the color theme of real red and shaded spruce throughout. All right, so I'll kind of get my stuff out of the road here real quickly. And we'll get those opened up. All right, so I've got Seasons Greetings. I'm going to put that right in the middle to start with. And I'll get that stamped. And of course, Real Red is just that. It's very red. So for the, um, the poinsettia image, I want to stamp off. I'm going to take that first red off. And then I'll go ahead and stamp. That way it's got a lighter um, red underneath of it. And um, even though the designer paper doesn't have the yellow tones in it, the post-it note or the sticky note is. And so um, I got the Daffodil Delight and then it's got the little center for that. And so then there's our greeting. And get all of that closed up. That's the only time I'm going to use Daffodil Delight. And I'm going to get a little dimension on this. Oh, I know what I wanted to do here. Um, after the fact, um, well, after I already had this one down, I thought, oh gosh, let's take some of these um, really pretty snowflakes that um, Stampin' Up! has a, 
as a returning flavor or flavor <laughs> a returning favorite this year these are called um, wonderful snowflakes these are just such a perfect little addition to anything that you want to jazz up just a little bit um, and so that's what we'll do so i'm going to go ahead and and it's nice you got a glossy side and a matte side i'm all about using the glossy side up i'm going to put a little dimensional on here and then i'm going to put two dimensionals on the back you don't have to put the dimension on that you could have just glued that one down if you'd like and then we'll put that in the center see it just kind of adds a little something to it and then i'm using the real red mini ruffled ribbon all throughout on all of the projects too this is such a fun ribbon i just really like it um i'm just going to make and plus um it high, like you don't have to be a perfect bow maker if you hand do the bows. And so that's what I'm doing here. So I'm just going to go a quick little bow. And we'll get that. If you have the whole um, spool, I just keep the one end on the spool until I'm happy with it. And I get my scissors. Oops. just dropped our next project on the floor. All right. Um, and then if you wanted to, you know, you could hot glue that um, on, which if I was doing um, a craft fair, I probably would get it glued. And um, but I'm just going to use a mini glue dot right now. And just kind of put that in between where the clip is. And then we can just drop that into um, a cello bag. This one happens to be um, a four by six, I think. Um, I've got, a, let me see if this will even fit in this one. Nope, um, I've got a six by nine, but it's out of my, oh, here it is. That's one thing with solo bags, they just kind of, you can, they get lost on the desk. So this one's a six by nine solo bag. And then, you know, just take that off and you can cut it down to size and then you've got it packaged. Um, okay, so that was my intent. And then last night, you know how like you have those um, late night like aha moments? Well, I had a late night aha moment for this um, project here. What if you wanted to give a little um, sticky notepad that's a little bit um, now for the holidays and then later afterwards? So if you really like somebody, you can make a little twofer for them. So one could be um, on the desk for this season, and then the other side could be for later on. So let me quickly get um, my corner rounder again. This is from um, Butterfly Kisses um, Designer Series Paper Pack. So I just grabbed something that was kind of springy, maybe into the next season. And then let's do our same thing. Let's sit here and we'll do a light glue on the back of it. And let's see, get it going. And this one does have some direction on it. All right. And then you could sew, um, put another post-it note then on this side of it and why don't we go ahead and do that because i think you know this would be a fun one i'm going to do um i've got the thanksgiving holidays and with my family and we're doing some little door prizes and so i think this one will end up i'll put this one in as a door prize since it's a double duty so let me know if you like that idea after we get it all done of maybe having a a little gift on a post-it note holder that's before and after. All right, so go ahead and get this up. <laughs> it's always funny after my lives and things, it's like I've got tear and tape and um, dimensional backings and everything just flown all over myself and the door and around the floors. All right, so here's this. 
All right. And then, um, you know, what you could do as well is, where is it? You know, you could give them another little, um, oh, what do I say? Or you could make a, choose the bow color that would go for both sides. And then that way they would just turn this around and then they could use that for spring. So it's kind of a double. Again, they could use this one now, but then maybe, you know, in January, February, they don't want the, the Christmas pattern. They could just use then the other side. So I thought that was um, something that we could try and something if you would like, you could do that. All right. That is our first um, project that we have. Alrighty, so let's see here. All right, so that was um, a paper project. Next, what I want to um, share with you is how we can do a, um, a Ghirardelli chocolate treat holder that's in a little matchbox design. Okay, so for this one, we're going to, again, sticking with the color theme of um, real red and shaded spruce. We are going to start out with a piece of cardstock cut at three by five and a half. So at five and a half, this is great because if you have your traditional eight and a half by 11, cut it first at five and a half. And then along the five and a half side, you can get several of the three inches. So um, that's how you can do that. And um, this we're going to use the, um, oh goodness, it's... Um, Christmas, Sweet Christmas, I think Sweet Christmas is the designer paper. It's the candy cane one um, in the um, Stampin' Up! holiday catalog here. And what I'm going to do is um, with a matchbook, you, oh, I've got this. I think you probably had seen this. So this is three by five and a half. I've got it scored at two and a half and at five. So we're going to fold it up so it looks like one of those matchbooks. And we will want to staple it here down at the bottom. And let me get my Ghirardelli chocolate here. Um, if you wanted to, you know, you could put the Ghirardelli chocolate in like this and stage it so that you actually staple a little bit of the, the bottom of the wrapper in it. But I didn't really want to do that. I wanted to have that tuck look, but I didn't want to actually um, have them have to tear out the candy right in that moment. So if you want to do that, you so can. Um, you can get any office stapler that um, you'd like. I happen to have a little mini stapler here that Stampin' Up! used to have. Um, and I think I've got about three staples in it yet. So let me see. And you want to staple it towards the bottom of that. Okay, so a regular staple um, stapler will work just fine too. Just kind of staple towards the bottom. And then I've got a piece of designer series paper. This is um, the, again, the um, Sweet Christmas designer series paper. This is cut at two and three fourths by two, four, two and a fourth. And we want to put that on the outside of our matchbook. So on this one, I'm going to put my liquid glue. You could use um, Stamp and Seal Plus if you like as well. And I'm going to put that here on it. And then I'm to get, make sure I got that pressed really well. Whoops. Uh, what? Just a second. On a, or it's not quite straight on there, but I'm going to go forward with that. And then when you have that, then that tucks in. So this is where I want to make sure I get a good contact on those edges. Okay. So that's how we do that. And I'm going to get our um, handy dandy glue dots. Whoops, if you'll want here on the outside. And again, it's like, I kind of like the idea for me um, is to put the glue dots on, on it versus stapling it in there. That way, I think if someone actually goes to take it off, they're not totally ripping off the little packaging that we made for them. All right, and so then that's going to fit right there above where um, the matchbook stapler or staple was at. And then this can get tucked in. Super fast on that as well. 
Um, let me get a few things here. All right, so now to do the sentiment. I didn't have my circle punches and striking it distance here. I use the Sweet Candy Cane um, stamp set. And on this one, I'm using the Candy Cane Wishes and Mistletoe Kisses on it. Um, just because, of course, we've got the Candy Cane and the Peppermint Viradelli. And I'm going to get that sentiment here. You could go ahead and get, like, I'm using some, I know it seems like I'm using a lot of retired products, but I love my punches. And so I've got my circle punches. You can use the layering circles die if you'd like. Okay, I've got the sentiment stamped. So you get the approximately the one inch um, circle. And then I've got the um, one and three eighths. Oh no, this was one and a fourth inch circle. And then I got one and three eighths circle, but you would just get the next, like if you've got the layering circles, it's just um, like two of the smaller ones that would fit your sentiment. And then I'm going to use liquid glue. We'll get those up. Oh, thanks. I'm glad you like the boxes. Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. All right, we'll put that down. Okay, so again, you know, we are focusing then on some of the same accessories all throughout. So I've got the ruffled ribbon and go ahead and I'm just going to show that if you wanted to, you don't always have to do bows. I'm going to make a pretty knot on this. And I know some people, um, they don't like to see this. So if you wanted to, you could um, even stage your ribbon to be kind of down towards the bottom, but I kind of like the idea that it does look like a matchbook, but that's, you know, that can be up to you. So it's all nice and secured already as far as the chocolate, but now I'm going to go ahead and make a knot. Sometimes on these smaller gifts, it's just kind of fun to make it feel like a package. So they'll have to open up the cello bag and then, you know, they've got to untie this. So I'm just going to make a cute little knot. So if you have trouble um, making bows um, for whatever reason, like maybe you're, um, you know, your hands don't work quite right um, or you just don't, you're never happy with your bows. Um, this is a great ribbon because um, you can make cute little knots in it. All right, so again, I'm going to get our um, snowflake, our wonderful snowflakes. This makes such a quick embellishment. So um, all of those things that, you know, we either want to get or, um, whoops, I meant to put that on first. Um, either um, those that we like want to make yet, or maybe you've purchased them ahead of time, like grab them out now, this is the time that we want to use them. Let's see. I think I do want that on first. Let me put this on. And that's one nice thing with this ribbon where you can kind of move it a little bit. This time I'll show you how we can anchor this down with liquid glue. So I'm gonna put the snowflake down here first. And then move my bow back over top of it. And then I'm going to take my um, my candy cane sentiment and I'm going to actually want to straddle this ribbon just a little bit. That way if they undo it, let's see here, whoops, get this off. That way they can untie it and the sentiment stays on. And there we go. So cute. See, by straddling it, I can move and play with that ribbon a little bit. Love it, love it, love it. Now on this one, we can get a three by five cello bag. 
and I've got mine coming in. I used the last one of mine. I happen to have a four by six, but um, you know, the three by five, four by six, you'll be all set. And again, you'll just, you know, can kind of tuck that down, tape it on the back, position your ribbon a little better. And now we've got this cute little um, Ghirardelli chocolate. So again, um, I was thinking that this would be a perfect little thank you to have on hand, um, you know, for whenever you might just need to pass out a quick little thank you. You almost could just keep these in your um, in your bag or in your car and pass them out along the way as well. And I was thinking, how cute would this be to be um, sitting at um, your guest table? So a little bit of a candy mint afterwards or, you know, just a little table gift. Also, um, what's known as a kiss goodnight where as your guests leave a party, you hand them one more little surprise, and this could be just something like that. So um, those are a couple of ideas on how you can do the Matchbook Ghirardelli treat holder. And they open it, well, they'd have to open up the ribbon. So again, it's a little gift. They have to open up the ribbon, and then they can have access to their yummy little candy. Okay. That is our second um, little gift that we're making today. All right, let's go back to some um, paper gifts. All right, so next, um, ever popular with me is the covered junior legal pad on this. So um, this is again one that, you know, I'm thinking craft fair, um, you know, just so many little gifts. Um, this would be a good one to even maybe try to whip out um, before Thanksgiving or um, early December when you meet people. That way they have, they can put their Christmas list, grocery list, whatever, all throughout the season. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll get started on this one. All right, so let's see here. So I got some legal pad, junior legal pads from Amazon. Boy, they were hard to um, find here locally. Um, we have a small like town of um, 10,000. And so we have a Walmart, a Dollar Tree, et cetera. The Dollar Tree ones are like super thin now. I mean, like there's literally, I think like five sheets in a pack on that. But I wanted something that was a little more substantial on this. Um, and those of you that follow me, like you've heard me say many times how my family are, you know, we're game families and we do a lot with um, with cards. And so we're always needing something to keep score on. All right. So we're going to start out with our junior legal pad our, um, with a piece of black cardstock, and this is cut at five by nine. Then we're also going to need um, some layering pieces for the front. Um, I'm using shaded spruce cardstock. This is cut at four and a fourth by six and a fourth. And then some designer series paper. This is um, Bows of Holly, and this is cut at four by six. So I purposely designed this four by six, thinking um, if you were doing a craft fair or mass producing these, on a 12 by 12 sheet of paper, four by six, you can get six of them on, off of one, um, one sheet of designer paper. So if you get a dozen um, junior legal pads and two sheets of 12 by 12, you're all set for some quick gift giving. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's make this one. All right, so you may have noticed I don't have anything scored right now. That's because I like to, um, like every um, junior legal pad can be a little different, but if you start out with this and you're just covering the front of it, so here's the one I don't have, um, like so, like there's different um, lengths of the backing on things. And so the nine will allow us to adapt to whatever we have. So I like to start by, as you can see, um, I'm tapping down the junior legal pad. And now what I want to do is I'm just going to roll this along the back and the top of it, I'm wanting to make sure I hold on to the bottom. So I want it to, um, you know, fit and then kind of do a quick check. Okay, so those are my 
where this one's going. Okay, so first of all, I kind of give it um, a little bit of press with my fingers here. And we're gonna come back over with our bone folder once we get some tear and tape on it. Okay, so, um, so that's what I'm gonna need for the um, legal pad that I have here. And let's see here, I'm going to get my tear and tape again. And I'm going to put tear and tape on the top part of it and on the side, on, on the back. And I wanna go pretty close to the top here. And so um, Stampin' Up's tear and tape is a fourth of an inch. And the top of this is not quite a fourth, but I'm gonna roll it backwards on it. Again, I'm using the tear and tape because I want a nice continuous contact. And then I'm gonna bring this down and I'm gonna get two of those pretty close to each other. Okay. Alrighty, I'll get my take your pick tool and we'll get these um, pulled up. And you just wanna make sure that your tear and tape doesn't go down too far because um, this is about an inch right here all together. And then we'll get the top. All right, so now we'll take our, um, our front cover again, kind of go tap, 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 and roll that on the top. All right, that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna get my bone folder and I'm going to really get some good contact with that. This is where you can kind of sharpen up the edges on it a little bit too. And if anything was a little bit crooked, this is where you can kind of press it into position. All right, so now that has a really finished look to it. Oh my gosh, that wood. I love that idea, Marilyn, to put all of them together as a present. Wow, that would be an awesome present. Good job. Oh, I like that idea. Okay, so I'm just going to do a simple layering here. So taking my four by six designer paper and layer it on top of the four, four and a fourth by six and a fourth cardstock. So maybe these are projects that um, you could um, start to bring in the accessories here. And then after you finish your Christmas cards, you'll know what paper you have left. And, you know, that would be um, a way that you could use up those extra sheets of paper too. And then it would match your, your greeting card. So I'm just kind of looking to see, you know, an approximate um, border on all of it. And I like the idea of this being black. It really contrasts and pops, I think, the, um, the paper that I'm using. All right, so from that seasonal labels, I've got the larger label now. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And this one is still from you know, the merriest moments thinking of you. So I'm gonna stamp that and then use the smaller little sprig here. Okay, so I've got the thinking of you and we're gonna do that in red. So we're on our third project already. So we could do that, get that. And then I got the little sprig one ready to go. And just like on here, um, we stamped off. I do want to stamp off one shade on the little, um, the little branch here. So I'm gonna do one going this way. I thought I just wanted to tone it down just one little bit um, to match the designer paper a little better. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and put some dimensionals. I'm going to go ahead and do four dimensionals on this one, maybe five. Give it a nice support. 
on it. And then, um, and I'm going to center this inside of this area here. Oh, and if we want, let's get a snowflake on it. Of course we want a snowflake. I like how Stampin' Up! like they really protected these snowflakes. There's a thin little sheet of, um, oh goodness, um, like tissue paper in there so that they get protected. Let's see, I'll do a matte side showing up this time. So we'll do a little snowflake in the middle. And then those are all ready to go. Maybe show a little bit. See that one's a little too big for it. So I'm just going to pop this down just a little bit. Oh, and you know what I'm going to do? Never do this with your scissors. I've got glue on it, but I'm going to go real fast. And I'm going to wipe that off and make sure I go back and do that. Okay, let's go ahead and kind of doing this on the fly just a little bit. I'm going to split that snowflake in half. And that way I can get a little bit on the top and the bottom. Whoops. Make sure I have the glue side down. Oh, that looks cute. All right, so take a snowflake and split it in half. All right, so now we're going to take our ribbon. Now on this, I do want to, um, I'm going to go ahead and tie it in a bow, um, but then I'm going to add some tear and tape to the back. But I kind of like to see where I want it to be first here. Let's see, kind of eyeball this. Okay, so if I want that, oops, oh goodness, whoo, that was going to be close. I do not want to do that. I just want to do it on the front cover. I almost, <laughs> I would have tied it completely shut on there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and tie a bow this direction. And then I'm going to um, share with you how I'm going to kind of keep it in place. All right, so let me get this. Again, this is just how I kind of keep the, um, like, I don't cut off any extra than what I have to. I just keep one side um, long and then um, on my spool, and then I'm not wasting any. All right. There we go. I do have quite a bit on there, but I'm going to go ahead and keep it for sake of our time here together. Okay, so now I'm going to um, size up the, the bow how I'd like it. Okay. All right, so here's a little tip to keep these in place. I do want to keep it in the center so I can kind of um, give that a little. I'm going to bend this just a little bit to move it. There we go. A little more. Okay. So wherever we want it in place to keep, I'm going to grab a glue dot and I'm going to put it underneath that side of the ribbon bow and then also on the other side. That way it's just going to kind of keep that ribbon right where we want it. And let me face this down here. And I'm going to get my tails cut. And I'm going to kind of force it a little bit where I want it. Get this down just a little bit. And you could put more glue dots um, however you like. And then if sometimes I like to keep my, my tails where I want them down. And so there again, you can use your um, glue dot. So if I want to keep a tail right here, do that. And then if I want to keep the other tail over here, can do that too. Um, and then when you go to package this, um, sometimes the packaging will help kind of flatten down your bow as well. Um, so that's the covered notebook cover or the junior legal pad. Whoops. 
should have made sure that my ribbon wasn't twisted. Um, now, if you want to, you can come in and whatever size this is, you can come up with some scrap paper and cover that too. Um, so this would be five by maybe like one and a fourth or whatever. So you could glue that so that it would match your paper up here. I've also seen where people will measure that and score it here and then just glue that down and then it's covered as well. I don't mind it being open here um, like this because um, I think it's just kind of, you know, easy for whoever gets it. All right, so then on this one, this would need a six by nine cello bag. And we'll put that one in. Again, um, and then just make sure your bows are going where they want to go. And then close that up. So cute. Um, I don't have it shown here, but what you could do is after you close up your cello bag, you know, you could put another exterior to and from um, sentiment on the outside, especially if you're doing a craft fair. That way people could just write on it. Or you could even package it even more and do another ribbon and tag on the outside of it. But that is our covered notebook. Okay, we have one more um, project here to do. And that is another super cute little treat holder here. And this is using those um, Kinder chocolates. And so they come in all different uh, like each season, I think they come out with the new character or whatever. And this one's just a cute little snowman. And so I just made a quick little treat holder for that. These come six in a in a box. And so, you know, you would be able to make six of these, um, again, fairly quickly. Okay, so let's get that one out here. And where is my note on that? Well, I think I'll have to just do this one on the fly. Let's see. Is this it? Oh, here it is. Okay. Nope, that is not the one. All right, let's see. Here is my ruler. Um, I think I know what it is by heart, but I'm just going to double check. This is one and a half or one and three fourths inches by, again, five and a half. And we're going to take this and along the five and a half line, we're going to score it at three and a fourth and four and a fourth. Okay, so again, it's one and three fourths by five and a half. And we're gonna score it at three and, a, um, three and a fourth and four and a fourth. And then we're gonna take some designer paper. This is from the Painted Christmas. It does have the red berries in it too. It just depends on where you cut it, if you see the red or not. But this is cut at one and a fourth by three and then we need another little piece, and this is one and a fourth, um, or one and a half by one and a fourth. So again, one and a half by, um, by three, one and a half by one and a fourth. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and um, put the longer piece along the long back here. Get that layered. And we'll put that in. And then because we're going to turn this up, we just want to put this on one side and then we'll flip it over on the other side. And then that one's going here. Just be careful if you've got any directionality that you want to stick with that you kind of make sure that you have it going in that direction that you want. Again, because I got it measured at five and a half on one of the sides, you know, you can start out with a half a sheet of, um, cardstock and then cut it into your one and three fourths and you can make several of these really super fast. All right, get my lid here going. All right, and before I get started there, now I'm going to put the sentiment, but I'm gonna have it say Christmas cheer and I'm gonna have it going in the long direction on that. That way um, I am leaving a little space on that and this one's taped and what people could do is open that up sign it and then put their little treat back in here or that's what you could do on it and we're going to do our christmas cheer the christmas cheer is from sweet candy cane so again i use two of the projects i use marius moments and then 
Um, the other two, the two treat ones, I used the sweet candy canes on it. So this one says Christmas cheer. And we'll use our real red. And see if I can get that lined up here. There we go. And we are all about our snowflakes. So I'll we'll use our other snowflakes. I thought the snowflake just kind of made it seem like it was, um, you know, it's a snowman. So there's little snowflakes there. And I'm going to put a little bit, let's see. And just put a little bit here and on the center but it's going to reside a little high so i'm going to flip it back over here and kind of want to kind of frame our snowman and then we're going to come in with our foam dots our stamp and dimensionals on the christmas cheer and put that one high and one low do that and then I'll just cover up where the center of the snowflake is for that alrighty and then um, again just like we did with the candy and so many of the other things we're going to um, put the glue dots here on the bottom of the wrapping um, do be careful with these kinders this is going to be my sample one because I grabbed it and it just um, collapsed real fast and broke the seal on it. So um, this is one that I'm going to make sure that I set aside and I don't sell um, and just kind of use as my sample because I don't want to ever, of course, have anything opened. And again, I like to use glue dots that way. I think it pulls off easy and it won't rip the candy if for whatever reason. Whoops. And we'll just get our little chocolate snowman right there. And then our ribbon is what's going to hold our little guy together. So again, we're going to make a knot. Kind of get however many that you'd like or how much you'd like on it. Um, for this one, because he's going to stand up, um, a little bit. I'm going to put um, a little bit of tear and tape along the back of the of here real quick to anchor the ribbon down below. I don't think I have that too low. I might have. Um, let's see here. We'll get this pulled up. So I do like to have the snowman in there. It does make it a little... It can make it just a tad bit awkward and you could so use the glue dots too but i'm going to go ahead and really anchor this down okay and then bring this around and i'm just going to make a knot he's going to wiggle and woggle until we get him in a solo bag he's not like the glue dots kind of just somewhat keep him in place the um, the ribbon's going to really keep the like the open I'll call it an open box but you know the wrap around and then let's see got that just a little tight loosen that up just a little bit there we go cut off some of the excess And then again, like I could put a little glue dot. I think I will. We'll just kind of keep the ribbon where we want it on the front. They don't have to open anything this time. It's just a matter of taking our taking their candy straight out of it. Put one under the dot or the knot. <laughs> there, there it is. And then we'll get our little cello bag and do that. I have some great nieces and nephews. I've got um, five of them. Three of them are um, here local and I'll see over the holidays. This could just be a fun little um, gift that I give them. Um, there's not a whole lot of candy in there. It's pretty airy, um, but, you know, cute for a little, um, you know, cute, cute enough for a kid to want to tear open. 
Um, again, I think it would make a great craft fair item for those of us that would want to go ahead and get several of these for some little ones to have on hand. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll bring in all of our projects again. And we'll just kind of see um, what you could make here with these four little craft fair items. And let's see, there's this. So, and like Marilyn says, like how fun to give all of them at once. There's not a whole lot of, um, like if you are just having some of these crafty things on hand, um, it's just a matter of getting some notepads and candy for that. All right. Um, thank you guys for watching. Um, I would love for you, if you like this, to please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, um, I would love for you to either subscribe to me on YouTube or follow me on Facebook. Um, leave a comment um, when you get a chance to watch this and let me know what you think. And I so appreciate everybody being here. Let me um, get my face back up here on the camera. All right, um, thanks again, you guys, for tuning in. I really appreciate your, um, you know, you're watching my projects and everything. And if you make it, I would love for you to share with me, um, you know, message me, do something. And let me see how you um, use these ideas in your creations. Have a great Saturday, everybody, and happy crafting. Bye-bye.